Oh, this is Halo 5 Tutor with another Halo 5 multiplayer gameplay commentary. As always, I'm bringing you the tips and tricks that you need to step up your game and take it to the next level. I'll help you win more often and have more fun while you're doing it. So I've been getting some requests for Team Slayer, so that's what I'm bringing you here. And normally I try to bring you some of my very best gameplay so that I can give you some good examples of what to do. But in this case, I'm doing something a little different. In this game, we only won the game by two points. So final score was 50 to 48. And ironically, my kill death spread was also two. So I had two kills more than deaths. And so that was the difference in the game. And it got me to realize how if I had had like one less kill and one more death, then we probably would have lost the game. It was that slim of a margin. And so sometimes it's the small and simple things throughout the course of the game that are going to ultimately lead you to a victory or a defeat. So I wanted to focus today on just some of the smaller, more subtle things that I'm doing and how they might have led to just one more kill or one less death that made a difference in the game. So I'm going to start by pointing out my weapon selection here. I've got the Magnum Pistol, which I'm personally just not very effective with. It's an excellent weapon, a lot of people are very effective with it, but I'm not. And so I go off in search of uh, a different weapon. There's usually two weapons that spawn right here in the base, but they're not there. So I'm stuck with the Magnum, and you can see that I'm not very effective with the Magnum here. I'm trying to put some shots onto the rocket spawn, but I'm just really not able to land much. I do know, however, that there's a battle rifle spawns right around the corner here, so I go for that. I'm able to pick it up, and you'll see that it pays off right away. I'm able to get two perfect kills in a row right here. Uh, get a perfect kill there, and in just a moment, I'm going to get a second one. So my tip is, is to, to figure out which weapons you're most comfortable with, figure out where those weapons are, and make sure to pick those up as soon as possible. Uh, it goes for kind of the standard weapons like the DMR, the battle rifle, as well as the power weapons. Know which power weapons you're more comfortable with. Like on this map, they've got the rockets and the sniper. And if there's one that you're more particularly comfortable with, make sure to go for that one. Uh, so I'm staying up top, and you're going to see that this is going to pay off as well, because this blue player comes out below me. I get two or three shots into him. He jumps down, so I drop down another level, and I'm able to finish up the kills as he's down on the ground level. So you can see that by starting up at the highest elevation, I had a really nice advantage. I put a couple shots into him. Then when he dropped down, I was able to drop down, but still maintain an elevation advantage and get that extra kill. So I've got the rockets, I'm just protecting our base a little bit here, hoping that I can get somebody to kind of rush in uh, cavalierly, but no, that doesn't happen. So I see that the sniper is going to spawn, so I'm hoping I can get a kill camping the sniper spawn with the rockets. I do get the one kill, which is nice, we trade basically. Unfortunately I left him one shell, so that's something to keep in mind going back out into it that there's still one rocket shell left. In fact, I see him coming in with my rockets, and so that's why I tried to maneuver around the rockets there uh, to no avail, unfortunately. So as I'm respawning, I always want to pay attention to where I, where I respawn, and I want to have an idea of where I want to go, gain an understanding of my surroundings quickly. I'm able to do that in this case, get a kill. That guy had no idea what his surroundings were. I was able to pick up a really easy kill. So, again, trying to head back to the middle. Uh, anytime my shields are fully down, I always drop back and let them recharge, uh, especially if I know that I'm relatively safe. And I like to try to control this top center area. I can put some shots into the rocket spawn, which is nice. And even though I die, I was able to keep the other team off the rocket spawn, which bought us a little bit of time. And you'll notice as soon as I respawn, I realize that I'm, I've respawned near those rockets. And they're still there, so I rush for them quickly. I know that the other team's going to be pushing for them as well, and so I immediately head over to this side as soon as I grab the weapon and clean off the other side so that the enemy can't push up. Now, uh, I've got two shells left. That's something I always keep in mind. And here I see the red X, so immediately I know that there's an opponent in the neighborhood. I just waited for him to come around the corner. 
and I was able to finish up with that last rocket kill. So I'm always aware of when I need to reload. That's something that I'm always keeping an eye on. I don't tend to reload if I'm in the middle of it, like if I'm engaged in something. But if I have a chance to fall back, I'll usually take that opportunity to reload if I'm kind of in the middle of things. Here, this was a little risky move. I, I thought I could probably pick up a cross map rocket. I did. Uh, that finished off my rocket shells. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to get this guy up top. He fell back. I didn't want to chase him down there because I feel like chasing to a lower level, if you don't know what you're getting into, is usually a bad idea. Most of my team was over here in this side of the base, and so I was moving over to support my teammates, but they all died. Uh, they kind of You can see there's red X's all over the screen. Anytime I see that, I try to hang tight. I didn't really know where a safe place to retreat would be, so unfortunately they eventually hunt me down. But anytime I see a lot of red X's on the screen, I try to sit tight for three or four seconds just to uh, give my teammates enough time to get back in the game. Now here I have an engagement where honestly it, it doesn't go well. Uh, <laughs> there's a, there's a, a blue player in this base that we're in a one-on-one -on -one situation. I've got this assault rifle and my magnum, which are like I've mentioned before, not really my preferred weapons. And so I felt kind of trapped here. Um, and I was trying to stay off the radar. I thought that he might chase me down, and at least if he chased me, I'd have a bit of an advantage, but that wasn't the case. So as we're winding down here, I do want to remind you again that this wasn't necessarily the most extravagant gameplay I've ever had, but a lot of times it's just a couple smaller, simple things. Picking up an one extra kill, preventing that one extra death are going to make the difference between life and death. Um, one of the things that I've, I've become much more comfortable with is navigating through the maps. And this map's a lot of fun because there's a lot of great jumps that you can make. And so uh, I guess the tip I would give you is to be very, very comfortable with the maps if you haven't got there yet. You want to get in there. Sometimes maybe it's a good idea to go in just uh, when it's just yourself. Uh, go into a custom game and explore the map, figure out how you can jump from one ledge to another. Because with the climbing motion and kind of the jetpack motion, the, the, the bursting motion, there's a lot of different jumps that you can make and a lot of different angles you can get on the map that really help you move around quickly. And sometimes that extra second or two can make all the difference between an escape or assisting your teammate, so on and so forth. Here I am up top, just trying to support my teammate who has the sniper rifle. Unfortunately, I think I get some, take some fire across map here. But when I respawn, I think what, this is where I go for the rockets, if I'm not mistaken. So I respawn on the rocket side at the very least. And I'm just trying to, I, I see that it's a very tight game, so I'm trying to not make any major mistakes. Unfortunately, I lose that encounter there. So going into the final seconds here, I knew it was very, very tight, and I didn't. I wanted to basically. I didn't want to play. I wanted to play it safe. Uh, I didn't want to give the team any unnecessary points. I did see that the rockets had been pulled, so I'm trying to figure out where the person who had the rockets went. And I saw that they were down here. I was able to clean them up, pick them up off the opponent. And I realized that there's no room for error here. I have to get this one. I'm able to wrap it up for the win. So again, narrow margin of victory. Not the best gameplay ever, but I did do a couple things that was just enough to get our team to win.